Hi, Drew. Thanks for coming in today. It's nice to see Hi. you. Um, so I just wanted to start off just by letting you know that everything we uh, talk about today is confidential. Is confidential. Um, of course, unless there's um, any harm to yourself or harm to others. Um, if there had been an order from like a probation officer, or anything legal, um, then of course that wouldn't be 100% confidential. Uh, but in your case, we don't have anything like that. So everything that we speak about today, as long as there's no harm to you or others, will be confidential. Um, do you understand about the confidentiality? 100%. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I also just want to advise you that um, every now and again, I'm going to be looking down and just taking some notes. It's, it is our first session today. So I just want to make sure that I get everything in so that I can properly um, summarize with you at the end and we can get the proper care plan for you um, when we're done here today. Oh, I understand. I'm like that too. I, I have a memory like a goldfish these days. I don't remember what I did yesterday. So yeah, taking notes is what I have to do every day. So I go ahead, take a, write a novel if you want to. I'll, All right I'll, on. That's perfect. I'll probably great. give you enough information to write a couple of novels. So. Oh, great. There we go. So we're perfect. We're on the same page. Perfect. Um. So just before we begin, is there anything that you'd like to ask me before we dive into anything here? Um... No, not really. Um, yeah, I already went over. I just, I was really concerned about being a safe space because I, I don't like opening up to people. Um, I have a lot of trust issues and um, a lot of, um, a lot of my external environment uh, um, has caused, was the leading cause of my, my addiction. Um, so I just wanted to make sure it was a safe space, but you already went over that and that's great. So you're, so, so I'm comfortable. Yeah, definitely a, a safe space here with with me today, for sure, Drew. Sure. And I totally Perfect. understand the trust issues. And you know what? That's completely normal. Perfect. We got this. Um, okay, Drew. So what is the main um, reason what brought you in here today? Well, I for since I'm 45 now, well, 44, still 44, 45 in a month. Um, every month counts. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I, I struggled with, uh, alcohol abuse. Um, I guess you get alcohol abuse for, since I was about 20 years old. Okay. And so that's going on well over two decades. Yeah. And um, I really just want to, want to put down the bottle for good. Okay. Okay. So, so you've been drinking for a little over 25 years now. Um, yeah. and you're ready for a change. You're ready. To I'm definitely down. ready. You're definitely ready. Okay. All right. I've been, I've been sober now for about three months, almost four months. And, uh, I'm really hoping that this is the last time. Okay. Um, so you've been sober about three, four months now. Is that your first time, um, trying to go through recovery or have you had attempts in the past during these 20 years trying to, uh, refrain from drinking alcohol? Uh, it's hard to remember. I've tried to quit so many times. Um, I don't have a specific number. Over the 20 years, there's been ups and downs in my life. And it seems to be like when things are going great, I'm not drinking. And then when, I guess when things hit the fan, that's when I hit the bottle. Um, yeah. I would say the, I guess my biggest trigger is stress. And I like to drown the stress out with the alcohol. Okay. And not only alcohol, I'm going to be honest, honest with in, in this. Um, I use the alcohol to cope with my stress after work. And then I would drink from after the time I get home after work, right till two, three in the morning, but I'd have to be up at seven o'clock to get back up to work. So when I get up to work, I would spot pop a speed pill or do a couple lines of, crush up a speed pill and and do a couple lines of of that to get me going in the morning so it was just a never-ending cycle of of yeah waking up and having to mask the hangover with with the speed to get me going through the throughout the day and then coming home drinking wake going to bed passing out not sleeping just passing out waking up yeah. taking the speed so okay so like so what you're saying is yeah, um, you don't only want to address your your alcohol consumption. You also have um, a drug 
drug problem as well. Um, and it's just kind of like a cycle for you um, just to keep yourself going. Now you're doing the speed because you're not sleeping and, you know, you're up all night drinking. So um, am I understanding that correctly? You want to work on both? Well, now that you've you've put it into that light, I think I do may have a a meth, a meth problem, a speed problem, because I am using that every day and I, I was drinking every day. And I'm not using speed or speed right now because I'm off drinking. But when I do drink, it's they seem to go hand in hand now. So yes, I th yeah, okay. I, I agree. Okay. I need to I need to make sure that I'm covering all my ways this year. Yeah. Okay. And I just want to jump back a little bit to what you said earlier. Um, so you've been off of drinking now for a little while. Um, how has that been going for you? Like, do you have like cope? Like, what are you using to cope? Like, how are you? Sorry, that's so many questions in a row. How are you coping with being off of, like with withdrawals, let's say? Well, I, whenever I feel like drinking, I I I try to go for a walk. I, I, I try to do some exercise. Um, I have a dog that I love to death. I take her, try to take her for walks. I have a son that I try to go out, out outside and do physical activity with. Um, and I also have a real, I'm really close with my mother. So I, I talk to her quite a bit to help with the triggers and the cravings. But I felt reaching out to, that's why I'm here today. I felt that I need that extra help. And that's why I'm here today. Yeah, for sure. I totally understand that. That's great. Okay. So you're telling me you have, you have a son at home um, yeah. and your mother, she's a great, it sounds like she's a great support for you. She is. She is, but that's another thing that I'm worried about too. I'm not, I, I, I have, she has stage four cancer right now. So I feel that, that she might not be around. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'd like to say, I'm very sorry to hear oh, that. That's okay. Um, okay. I appreciate, I appreciate that. Um, but I feel that she may not be around. So that's kind of for much longer. So that's kind of stressing me out too. And that's making me want to drink. Okay. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like a win lose situation because I have that support system, but yet I'm also very worried that I'm going to lose that support system. Yeah. So that's stressing me out and that's making me want to drink. Yeah. It's I really, really it's tough. tough. It's really, really tough. Absolutely. But that's why I came, came here today to, to make sure that I have that support so that, so that if that does come to the, come to the point where I really want to drink, then I have someone I can talk to about. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? And that it's so great of you. And that's the first step, right? Like just understanding that you need some help. Everybody needs help, and we don't want to feel bad for asking for help or, or just having somebody to talk to sometimes, and you know maybe see things in a different light. So like. Be very proud of yourself for coming here today. And we will definitely work together. We're going to create a plan and we are going to get some steps into play for you. Find out what you're comfortable with, um, what you're comfortable with doing um, as far as your recovery plan goes. So definitely, um, I'm glad that you came in here today for sure. Okay, sure. Thank um, you so better already. Oh, that's great. I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that. So... I kind of just want to just go back. I don't want to dig too far it, much into it today, but um, you mentioned that you're drinking after work. What kind of job do you work, Drew? Um, I manage 18 um, retail stores. Oh, wow. All over um, all over um, the GTA and Northern Ontario. So wow. I'm on the road a lot, which is another concern. If I start drinking again and, and I'm driving for my job, that puts my job and my my life at risk if if I get caught drinking and driving, I get caught driving while I'm while drinking. It's just a lot. So yeah, absolutely. And you know, and it's, it's great. Very stressful. Yeah, I can. I, that sounds like a lot. Eighteen retail stores and all over. Like wow. So you definitely have a lot uh, going on, um, for sure. Oh, definitely. I I to put it in perspective, I put put on 200,000 kilometers on my company vehicle in the last three years. Oh my, wow. So, so I'm on the road a lot. So You are. And being on the road too, and being away from your family um, and your son and your dog, you said you're a dog lover. That's wonderful. Yeah. And so it must be very stressful. I can totally understand. Many um, lonely nights, many lonely nights in the hotel with just me and my bottle. That used yeah, to be. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, what about relationships? Do you uh, do you currently have um, anyone in your life um, that helps you support you that way? Um, I only have just my personal relationships with my with my parents and my son. I don't have any outside relationships. Okay. Um, I lost a lot of friends due to just working all the time and my addiction. Okay. And um, I had a fiance about nine years ago um, just leave me in the parking lot the day that uh, we were moving into our new home from our other home. She just left with, with her son and I was thinking that they were going to meet at the new home, but she never showed up at the new home. Okay. So I haven't let anybody else into my life since then. Okay. So I I feel that that may be another reason why I haven't fully processed what happened to me nine years ago with my family being torn apart in the matter of a minute. Yes. And did you find that you um, maybe dr did you drink more while oh, going yeah. through this? Definitely. Those the next four years after that were I don't remember. Okay. Okay. See, now we're definitely getting somewhere with that for sure. Okay. I, um, that's, I, that's how many, much drugs and drinking I did for those four years. I don't remember four full years almost. It's just, it's just haze. Yes. Okay. And that was after um, the separation with the fiance. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, Drew. Well, um, before we start getting into things that I would like to suggest for you, is there anything that you're interested in? Do you have you looked into any of um, programs in the community, um, any meetings? Is there anything you're specifically looking for? Um, just just support. Um, I've looked into some community meeting. Uh, I've looked online, tried to do some research on some meetings in, in my community. But I, unfortunately, I live in a very small town right now. Of only 900 people so there we don't have any of those options okay um i would have to go to a larger a larger city such as espanola or sudbury to take place and i mean i can't that that'd be a lot of driving every week mm -hmm. uh, for me to um to go to those meetings i've looked into some online meetings but again i i don't really trust expressing my expressing what i'm going through on online yet Okay. Um, through those meetings, it's just I need that one-on-one -on -one time. Um, I just basically want to need a support system and help me to point me in the right direction um, when I'm outside of this this session. Yeah, absolutely. It, I it, it's hard. It's hard to. It's hard to describe. <laughs> sorry. No, no, don't be sorry. It, it is. And you know when when somebody asks you like, "What do you want to do to help yourself?" You're like, "Well." I'm here, you know, and, and that's what I'm here for. You know, I'm here to help direct you, put, you know, we're going to help get you on the right path. Um, so I just want to quickly summarize just to make sure I understand a lot. Um, so uh, you've been drinking for about 25 years now, and that's your main concern. Um, because of the drinking, the long work hours, um, a recent, not a recent, sorry, but uh, a separation nine years ago, um, you're also, you know, you have your mother who's very ill right now and not stressing you out because she's a huge part of your support system. You've got a lot going on. And oh, single, single father of a teenager. Yes, absolutely. God help me. Yeah, <laughs> teenagers, eh? They're, they're definitely, teenagers are fun. Teenagers are fun for sure. Um, so we want to, we definitely want to uh, look at into this, the stress as well um, and try to maybe see if we can, um, come up with a plan, maybe some, you know, there's all kinds of things like breathing exercises and stuff, which I won't get too much into the detail about it today, but I'd like to, um, I'd like to respect your wishes and we're going to keep this for now, um, just one-on-one. -on -one. Um, are you, would you be happy meeting um, every week for now, or would you like to spread them out a little bit more until you get more used to it? To be honest, I think every week would be great right now because right now I'm going home, coming home every day, and I just, it's taken me everything not to drink. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? And I love that because I actually, in the beginning, I would love to meet every single week so that we can, you know, we do those seven days and we're going to make plans so that you're going to go home with homework 
and you know, and, and it's not hard homework. It's going to be easy things, but it's going to be things that are going to like help you cope. And, uh, and then we'll meet every week. So it's like, you don't have to go too long without seeing me. And at the same time, um, I'm also going to provide you with my email address. Um, I'd like to email you some information after our session today. Okay, just some, yeah, just some information. Just, you know, take it as you, it's not, you don't have to like read it all through, but there, you know, just some um, coping, you know, just to help maybe help cope with um, going through like your mother being sick with being a single parent, which is also very hard as well. I'm going to send you some things through email. So you'll have my email. And if you ever within those seven days and, and you feel like you need to reach out, you can always reach out. You know, there's also, there's all kinds of uh, hotlines out there too, that, you know, I can help you. I can, you know, email you some stuff as well, but I'm, I want you to know that our safe space is always here no matter when it doesn't have to be during our meeting, you know, obviously on a respected manner, but you can definitely email me and reach out. And I check my work email all the time. Um, also know that if things do get too tough, you know, there are the mental health crisis lines. I do want to, um, at our next meeting, when I come, if you don't mind, I, I am going to look at some resources just because you I just kind of want to look at your area a little bit more. Um, maybe I can find some things that are like hidden in that, that you don't even, that you may not know about. And maybe you do, maybe you don't, but I'm going to do a little research for you as well. So okay, that when we come you. back next week, you know, maybe I can, you know, there's could be all kinds of different things that I can, I can find. I like searching for stuff and try to help, help my clients out, make them feel more comfortable. I appreciate that because I get frustrated when I'm doing stuff, especially when I don't really want to do it. I just kind of make excuses like I can't find something. So if you throw it into my face and say, here you go, maybe then that might be the wake up call. So I appreciate that. Right. And that's my job. That's what I'm here to do. I'm going to, I'm going to give you, I'm going to provide you with the tools that you can use on this path to recovery and hopefully together, mostly you, but together we can, uh, we can make this work for you, Drew. I'm really, I just want to say I'm so happy that you shared, you know, everything with me today. It was a very, it was very nice to, to talk to you and know that you could be, that you felt open and felt like this was a safe space. So I want to thank you very much for coming in today. You took the first step to recovery and I'm proud of you and you should be proud of yourself. Well, thank you for listening to me. I felt like I blabbed on. And I had a hard time exp expressing what I was saying, but but you made me feel so much more comfortable. And I can't wait till we can sit down and actually get into a full hour of of you know of my my woes, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and for sure. And moving forward, like today, I just want to explain that too. Today we're kind of like all over the place. That's just because I'm trying to get a general of idea of what you're going through and what we're going to do. So moving forward, each week I'd like to you know, we'll set a meeting topic for that day. Like when you come in, we'll be like, hey, how are you feeling today? What are we going to talk about today? We're going to focus on that one thing. We might, you know, veer off into other conversations, but we're going to set a topic so that we can, you know, each week focus on something and accomplish things one at a time. Oh, that, that, sounds, sound? that sounds amazing. Right. Can't wait. Good. I'm looking Good. forward. It's already making me look forward to something. I think that's what I really need to, I need to get get into my daily plan as something to look forward to and i think that that is great that's that's definitely a uh, thank right you for on. being here for me oh right andrew thank you and I'm, I'm so glad you feel safe do you have any questions for me before you go um no uh, i don't think i have if i have anything i'll have your email and maybe i'll just shoot you an email yeah. um, later on tonight and if i have any questions that Right now, my head's all full of everything. So just getting everything out, I feel so much better. So when I go home, if anything comes up, I'll just I'll just email you. Okay, if you're perfect. okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. And then I just want to, so for our meeting next week, um, what's your schedule like? When, when would you like to meet? Um, right now, I took a, little, a leave of absence from my work just to try to get everything taken okay, care of. So my you're on a leave of absence right now as well. Perfect. Yeah, just okay. to get my health. I needed to just to get my health on. No, that's absolutely fine. That's, you know, it's some, you got to do those things sometimes. And at least you're taking advantage of that time off of work and you're here and I'm going to help you take advantage of that. So um, how about next week at the same exact time, same day? Do you want to do that? Perfect. Is that that's good for great. you? Great. Yep. That's awesome. Well, Drew, it was so nice meeting you today and I look nice forward to this journey together with you. 
Thank you. I'll see you, you take next care. Time. You have a great day. Thank you. Wow, you did great. Wow, oh, I'm so red. You had so many. You had you. I love. Uh, I like the fact that you used so many open-ended questions. They got me on my toes to try to try to come up with more stuff. Um, and then you further you you reflected back to me, and then you, and then you you asked more open-ended questions, and then furthering cross questions. You did a great job. Thank it, you. It, it was great. You made me feel really comfortable. Nice. You got a lot of information out of me to the point where I had to like, like take a moment of silence and think of more stuff to say. Okay, good. Um, right which on. is great, which is really, really good. Um, no, I, you made me feel really, really comfortable. And yeah, I, the, the open-ended questions was great. I didn't have the close end. I think there may have been one or two close-ended questions, but those were close-ended questions that are, are good to have. Yeah. I mean, you gotta have a few that are that are um are necessary right yeah okay but no no it was good no, it was good okay let me stop this recording